Hey guys, so today I am going to tell you why I am in such a good mood um, and so positive about magic finance. Numero uno, I think something is going to happen. I think either a, because there's an, such a huge opportunity in magic right now that has not been realized. Um, Pokemon cards are very hot and they're very expensive and it's already kind of too late to get into them in my personal opinion. Uh, sports cards, the last major sport, again, I'm going to discount hockey because that's like, you know, I'm going to discount hockey, but basketball is very hot. Football then was the next one to go, and now they're doing baseball. So eventually they're running out of, you know, sports to hype up. And they, they've dabbled into soccer. Soccer is now semi-hot, I guess. I don't really understand the market, but it's a very interesting idea. Uh, tennis, women's soccer. And they're dabbling into women's tennis and like you know golf, and you really have to like think about, huh? Well, the next logical thing for them to get into right now, because they're running literally out of things to get into right now and hype up, is magic, which has not happened yet. So magic before the Pokemon boon was the number one trading card game. It went Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh. Magic is older than Pokemon. So it's target demographic of older people like me have a lot of money to spend. Uh, the Joe Biden administration is just pumping money out to like there's no consequence. So everyone's getting, or, I mean, most people get a stimulus, most, um, and so on. Very interesting scenario is playing out before our eyes, right? And let me kind of explain. So I went to this show and I wanted really to get a good idea of like how many people would buy magic cards, how many people would sell, or how many people are selling magic cards at the show, and how many people would actually consider buying and holding and trade. And it's a lot more than I thought, um, but no one was actually, the, the amount of magic at the event was very little, but the amount of people who knew about magic and who was you know interested and wanted to talk to me in great length about magic was very high. So there's very high interest. There's just not a person yet who has taken care. So Gary Vanderchuk, he kind of took the Pokemon. He kind of, oh, Logan Paul took Pokemon. Gary Vanderchuk took sports cards. They're two very famous people who are not typically in those fields. Um, it just takes one famous individual to skyrocket magic cards to the moon. It takes, we need our version of Logan Paul. If not, Netflix can skyrocket to the moon. Because one of my main reasons I think Magic has done so poorly in times is it just doesn't have content about the Planeswalkers or anything. It doesn't, you know, I mean, the last time somebody tried to produce content, he was blacklisted because he said Chandra was not gay. I mean, that was the last time anyone made an attempt to produce any Magic content in terms of lore. And it's funny because, I mean, you think about it, like, hey, you say this, now your whole career's ruined. And the last content creator I can remember was uh, that Noah guy who uh, outed himself as a Redditor. So, I mean, this is not great. <laughs> I'm sure Wizard Coast is sitting back and be like, eh, maybe we should never produce any content because it kind of looks dangerous. But again, do you, think, do you think the Nintendo company located in Japan wants a guy who videotaped dead people from trees in a suicide forest in Japan? Do you think, hmm, that's the guy we need to be the front and center, you know, of our little Pokemon 25th anniversary campaign. No. So it doesn't really matter if they accept PewDiePie or not. It doesn't, or whoever this new radical, like eventually we'll, we'll get someone like Logan Paul. I guarantee, I 100% guarantee it to you. So now I was talking to a really annoying guy and this annoying guy showed a, um, and, and this is the philosophy I'm gonna tell you. And this is something that I, I really wanna hammer home with you. This annoying guy sold um, some cards. He sold two cards, slab cards. At the time, you know, I mean, they were great cards. I'm not gonna mention what they are because then you could do the back you know, math. And uh, he contacted me like a year later. So he sold the cards to Rudy for $390. And then a year later, I haven't heard from him in a year. And then he wanted to, uh, you know, sue me for defamation over a video I made, which wasn't even that bad. It was just like me talking about how that was a bad, you know, he offered the cards for me for 750 
um, and he sold it to Rudy for free 90, the exact same cards the very next day. And I can show you the email chain, but then he would be pissed off and tried to sue me for defamation, even though he is not a lawyer. <laughs> And he's very weak-minded. And actually, you know, so those same cards, okay, those, those cards he sold for free 90. Let's focus on Axel. Um, they, if I were to take them at the show, they would easily sell for 4,000, if not more. And I told him this, and he knows this. He doesn't need a free 90, right? He doesn't need a free 90. So within a year, a free 90 investment became a $4,000 investment. I think that can another. I can. I think that can four thousand can go up another five x to twenty thousand within the next ninety days. He's never going to get those two cars back. They're now with Rudy Chan, and Rudy Chan's never going to give them back because he's probably betting on the same thing I'm betting on. It's got to be time for magic eventually. Now, what is the trigger point? What is the catalyst? I don't know, but. You know, at all signs point to magic becoming the next Pokemon. Because Pokemon is just so expensive right now. I use, I mean, I'm probably still opening product on my channel because I'm a dummy. I opened so much product. I, if I had kept that product sealed, I mean, bank. Absolute bank in that product, right? So anyway, I had this discussion. It was kind of semi-interesting of this individual. And it really, you know, the reason I'm bringing it up right now was he sold something to Rudy for $400 about a year ago. Now that same item is now worth 4,000 plus in cash. In the next 90 days, if that item goes up to 20K, I mean, that's great. You're never gonna be able to buy that item back at free 90. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's why I told him. Whatever that item was that you sold a year ago, those two items, you're never gonna get them back uh, at the price that you sold them at. And that's the same scenario I feel right now. If I sell uh, Underground C right now for let's say 600, 700, I'm never going to get that card back at that price. So when is it time to sell? When is it time to buy? It, it's very interesting. And to kind of make a long story short, that just reminded me of like, like that card deal. So that deal wasn't even a big deal to Rudy. Rudy just threw it in. Like it was a, a video of all of his deals for that week or something. It was just like a minor deal, but I knew what it was because the guy had contacted me before and he was really butthurt. And I think he wasn't butthurt at me. He was butthurt that he sold it. Like he, he was butthurt that he sold it for at that price, you know, I think the cards were worth probably 550 at the time. He wanted me to pay 750. I said no. Rudy bought it for 390, and now it's at least. I mean, you take it to Dallas. To, you take it to the Dallas show, the pre the weekend or whatever the past weekend. Uh, yeah, four thousand, five thousand dollars maybe, and then within 90 days, I think that you know they're pretty good slabs. And I know somebody at that show would have easily bought it for that price, if not more because they are reserveless foils. So you kind of can guess what I'm talking about. I mean, they're, I mean, honestly at 750, it was overpaid at the time. Maybe I would be interested in buying it. Um, but as soon as he said that Rudy was interested, I knew that he was going to get low ball. So just let, you know, let Rudy feed on the minnows, right? I, I have no interest in, you know, competing against Rudy, nor could I compete against Rudy. I don't have the buying power and I don't have the leverage that Rudy has. So, hey, like once he mentions Rudy's interested, I'm out because I'm not going to get into a bidding war with him over those two cards. Uh, especially like if it was like a bigger collection, like if he had like a bunch of them, which then he would have lost a bunch of money. Uh, if he had a bunch of them, maybe I go into bidding war because, and then maybe I pay like twice as much as Rudy because it's a better collection. But if it's just two cards, I mean, it's very little interest to me, right? Anyway, hi guys. <laughs>